May I go up? Okay, you got it. You guys want me to read one more chapter? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll just read these three, two, one. We'll read one more. No, two more. Please don't play around. All right. So I think we're getting to the main part, though, because there's a picture of the candy box with one little piece of candy in there. All right, those of you that have read the book, you know it's going to get interesting after this. Gentlemen, please don't. All right. It was Sunday afternoon. The sun was sinking low in the sky, but the air was still quite warm. John was wandering along in the direction of Susan's house, absentmindedly looking down at the sidewalk when his eyes were suddenly caught by a dully gleaming silvery gray coin lying right in his path. You? The coin was the size of a quarter. The coin was the size of a quarter, but even as he leaned forward eagerly to pick it up, John noticed there was something strange about it. It didn't have a picture of George Washington or a picture of an eagle. On one side, there was a picture of a fat boy. On the other side, there were a letter J.F., which was funny, John thought, because those happened to be his initials. Grasping the coin firmly, he ran on towards Susan's house. He liked to collect things. He thought she might be interested to know that he had the beginning of a coin collection. Although he was in the habit of going over to Susan's by the same route, a route, once or twice almost every day, this afternoon John found himself turning left where he usually turned right. I always go the same way, he thought. This time, let me go for a change. I'm going it anyway. He didn't stop to consider that you could not go east by going west unless you go all the way around the world. Makes sense, right? I know. No. He didn't stop. Okay. Only two blocks along a familiar street, John came to a small corner store. It was a neat red brick building with two uh, with two show windows. They were full of all sorts of candy. Susan was immediately absolutely, or absolutely forgot. John pressed his nose against one of the windows. He was imagining the taste of the chocolate covered almonds, chocolate fudge on the other side of the glass when he noticed a man in a white paper sitting behind the counter and beckoning him. John was surprised. He hadn't, like, he hadn't expected the store to be open on Sunday. Don't just stand in the doorway, John, the man called heartily. Come on in. He gets a fresh, sweet, creamy chocolate. There's a special sale today. I'll show you the picture. Mm -hmm. Kind of strange. Like you guys going downtown. Yeah, he knew his name. I'm going downtown. Shocker. Maybe. I don't know. Going down a new street. Or maybe he knows. No, I know that. Maybe. Small town, right? All right. So, how did the man know his name? John wondered. He couldn't even remember having seen the store before. The storekeeper saw John hesitating. The chocolate I use in my kitchen comes direct from the heart of Africa. He said, I use none but the finest ingredients in my recipes. Well, I bet he's never had chocolate in my before. Thank you, John replied, walking to the counter. You see, the trouble is, well, no money, the storekeeper said. No money whatsoever. What have you got there in your right hand? John had forgotten the old coin in his hand. Oh, he said, this is part of my coin collection. I mean, he added more honestly. I'm going to save this coin and get some more to make the collection. Let me have a look at it, the storekeeper said. He looked briefly at the coin. Ha! Exclaimed. Is it any good? John asked, his hope suddenly rising. It's very good, said the storekeeper. Only kind of money I accept. But I don't suppose a kid like you would want to spend it on a box, a whole box. I imagine you'd rather keep this as your favorite point collection and spend it on chocolate, wouldn't you? Oh no, said John. Chocolate any day. Go ahead then, help yourself, the storekeeper said, pointing to a heavily laden, heavily laden show table piled high with large cellophane wrapped candy boxes that are all exactly like many of you guys ever walked into um these candy. candy oh yeah. And all like that. Runs. Okay. You mean I can have one of these? John asked, his eyes brown with surprise. The candy boxes were as big as the ones his father always brought home at Christmas time. Just help yourself, just where I keep assured him. That is, unless you think it might be better to ask your mother first. She wouldn't mind, John said hastily and blushed. The storekeeper winked knowingly. I'm sure she won't, he agreed. Not in the long run, anyway. John took one of the large boxes under his arm, declined the storekeeper's offer to wrap it as a gift, thank him, thanked him, Hurried out of the store before there, uh, before there could be any question of anyone changing his mind. The storekeeper smiled as he watched his customer uh, hurrying away down the street. A couple more. John decided that it might be sensible to enter his house quietly by the way in the kitchen. With a large candy box hidden behind him, he let himself in the back door and crept the kitchen stairway on tiptoe towards his own room on the top floor. I don't know if you guys have something in your house. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Piece of it was the only piece of chocolate 